Hello, thanks so much for tuning into Byte Live. My name is Nicola Kemp and I'm Editorial Director of Creative Brief. And it is my complete pleasure to introduce this masterclass on inclusive creativity. Creativity has the power to change the narrative and it's a truth brought to life with compassion, creativity and authenticity by Engine's groundbreaking campaign for the Kian Prince Foundation. I'm lucky enough to be joined by some of the brilliant people behind that breathtaking work today to really delve into the experience, the creative execution and the learnings behind it. So with me today, I've got Dr. Mark Prince, OBE, CEO and founder of the Kian Prince Foundation, Nadia Cockney, Global Group Marketing Director at JD Sports. I've got Richard Knott, Creative Director at Engine, Katie Farmer, Head of Production at Engine, and last but not least, Carl Woolley, Global Real-Time Director at Framestore. So thank you so much for joining us today. And, and Mark, to kick off, I'd love it if you could tell us a bit more about the foundation and the impact that this work has had on the foundation. Yeah, that's, uh, that's my pleasure to do that. So the Kyan Prince Foundation is a non-for-profit charity and it focuses on empowering and inspiring young people to use their potential and their gifts and passion to become the great individuals uh, that we believe that they are. Um, we don't want them to get caught up in the life-stealing cultures that is on offer for a lot of young people today and the belief systems that lead to their um, antisocial behavior, that lead to them ending up in gangs, carrying knives, and also could at its worst end up to early graves, sadly, which is what we are dealing with currently. Um, so we use, the way that we do this, we use motivational speaking, the power of lived experiences. We love to share with young people storytelling and um, they engage with that on, on a very high level. So we get to the hard to reach young people as well, as well as the young people in schools. And uh, we not only use motivational speaking and lived experience, we use a 12 week program that I've created because I've recognized that relationship building is at the very core of making change. And throughout the, the, pro, the, the process of the program, we end up building long lasting relationships with these young people, creating opportunities for them and just giving them the blueprint for success so they can move forward in life in whatever era they want, they've got this blueprint locked. So we wanna build character, we wanna build that discipline that's needed to become successful. And we do this through the 12 week program. Uh, so that's Cayenne Prince Foundation. That's what we love to do as an organization. And um, uh, we do this, the impact that um, this has had uh, on our goals. Um, I think mainly it's due to the exposure. I think the exposure was really big for this one because it went global. So it's very hard to find people that, that didn't know about it. Uh, you know, we're easily recognizable on the street now. They recognize our brand um, really easily. And um, I found that it's easy for organizations that require our services. We've had a lot more attention from people wanting to, to get us into their schools, wanting to collaborate with us. I think it's just had a huge impact on the way we're running our day-to-day -day business now. People wanting to be connected with us because they've seen the power of the story, the power of our outcomes and what we're doing with young people. So I think that's been some of the biggest impact and our goals really is to get out to as many young people as we can and, and change their lives. So that's really changed in a huge way. This campaign's made a big impact in, in that area. That's so great to hear, Mark. Thank you so much. And, and, and I'd love to bring you in here, Richard, because Mark's really talking about that impact at scale. And that's so interesting in terms of what this campaign and the creative execution delivered. I mean, could you tell us how you got it off the ground and creatively um, and, and what it means to you? Because it seems to be so rooted in the values of the foundation in terms of that positivity and that possibility. Um, could you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, sure, absolutely. I mean, 
a campaign that actually took shape over the course of about two years. It was, it was quite a long process. And in that time, it, it kind of grew and grew. But um, I'll tell you about the, the, the real starting point, I guess, was this realization that Dave, my, my partner and I had, that were kind of alive today, or at that, at that time, he would have been at his absolute peak as a, as a footballer. I think that stage he'd have been 21 or, or, or 30. And obviously, Kyan's defined by a hell of a lot more than his athleticism, but there was just something that was really poignant about that, you know, that, that what had been lost, it really brought that into sharp focus, what had been lost just through that you know, one avoidable moment. So kind of got to think about, you know, if, if Kyan were a pro today, what, what would that mean? And one of the very first things we came to with that is, obviously, it'd, it'd be with a big club on the footballer's salary, all, all that sort of stuff. But alongside that goes um it'd be in fifa you know it's it's the, the biggest video game out there and it's one of those things that just part and part part and parcel of being a footballer you will see the, the the players with their cards and their stats and all that sort of thing and what was exciting about that as we the next realization was wow i mean that, that is exactly where where we need to find our audience you know young young kids who don't really engage with traditional media they're, they're not really watching tv certainly not tv adverts you more like to find them on their phones and or gaming you know playing fifa so um we said that that was kind of where the plan hatched really you know it was this big what if what if we could recreate kind as the player would be today how he developed into his top pro drop him into fifa um kids would then discover him and you know who's this amazing player i've never heard of wow his stats are incredible one of my teams but then look him up and discuss him and then that could lead us to to introducing mark and the foundation and, and allowing them to kind of inspire and, and do a bit of you know an educational piece around it as well so um yeah, that's kind of how it started in, in terms of what it, it means to us i mean yeah it's it goes about questions it's, it's the most important thing that we've ever worked on you know most rewarding thing we've ever worked on and we're just really excited about what, what we can do next with, with, with Mark and the Foundation. That's really good to hear, Richard. And, and Carl, I'd love to bring you in here because that as a brief, you know, bringing Kyan to life um, and, and realising his legacy. I mean, that's a huge responsibility. I mean, how did you take that on? Because that's such a powerful part of the campaign. And also to, to Mark's point at the beginning as well, like reaching the audience where they are, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're in games. We talk about, we're still talking about gamers, but that's actually just people. It's such a huge phenomenon of, of a kind of community space. So how, how did you take that on? Yeah, great question. I mean, it's such an incredible amount of responsibility, isn't it? And, you know, not least for the fact that you're, you're, you know, you're re recreating someone 15 years in, in the future with no sort of knowledge, um, no reference material for how kind of would have looked. And that's really sort of where we started, you know, a couple of years ago, as Rich said, we knew this project could be on the horizon and you know once uh, the folks at EA said right we're good to go let's drop drop him in the game dropping him in the game became a reality and there's lots of sort of steps in the process that you you go through in realizing digital humans whether that's in something like FIFA or a billboard or you know on, on a match attacks card so really the the pressure I think you know that we felt internally at Framestore was you know, we've created digital humans for 20, 30 years, but I think even, you know, Mike McGee, our co-founder, chief creative officer would say this is the, this was the biggest test for us because we didn't want to let Mark down, you know, and the family down and his siblings and, you know, people that were affected. And it was only after the campaign we sort of realised, well, actually, how many more people have now been sort of touched by the work that's been done and how many sort of proud QPR fans has been phenomenal and you know friends and family have said oh did you see this thing on BBC and you sort of put your hand up and said that's that thing I was working on that couldn't tell you about you know and it's not like we haven't you know done done high profile things in the past but in terms of you know Rich said you know drop dropping Kyan into FIFA they've never ever done this before right and and, and putting a kind of non-playing player into FIFA is, is a world's first. It's never been done before. And the process normally involves, 
you know, you, you, you kind of do a shoot with your player and you scan them and you build them in CG and you have lots of different versions and folks at EA have a very complex system for doing that because like Richard said, it's the world's biggest video game. And you, you can't just kind of go, here's some, here's some photos, let, let's go. So obviously we didn't, we didn't have that with Kyan because, you know, sadly he, you know, he lost his life far too young. So we had to work to create what we believe Kyan would have looked like had he been alive today. Um, and internally, you know, Katie, Richard and I worked with uh, likeness artist Chris Galf, who um, we've worked with in visual effects before to, you know, do just a, a, a painting of Kyan, what we thought Kyan would look like based on lots of photos of Mark when he was younger, siblings. Um, I have looked at thousands and thousands of images of Kyan and gotten to know him through a 2D image on, on my computer monitor. So once we felt like we got to know Kyan and captured the essence of him, we then showed that to Mark. And, and, and um, once we sort of got a you know, positive response from Mark, we then went into creating him so that EA could work with him to put him into the game. And then all the different versions of Kyan that you see on the billboards in the film, um, which was an interesting challenge because how do you photographically capture someone who doesn't exist. Um, and that's why we, we use the deep fake technology. It's so interesting, the different layers of the campaign, because, you know, there's the technology, but obviously there's, you know, this huge human element as well, in terms of the campaign meant that millions of people across the globe mm. got to know Kyan, which is just, it's incredible um, achievement. and. And, and with that that in mind, because there's lots of iconic points of, of this campaign, and and one of them is really that iconic Piccadilly Lights screen, the JD Sports campaign. And and Nadia, I'd love to bring you in here. Could you tell us a bit about how and why you got involved? Yeah, sure. I mean, when we were approached with this project, there were so many reasons why we should. Do there's so many. I mean, JD is you know interwoven with the fabric of youth culture and youth culture in all of the communities across the UK. Um, if you look at Kayan, he, he was this young, amazing guy with loads of talent and limitless potential. Um, and as the guys have said, had he reached his 30th birthday, he would have been in the peak and prime of his sporting career. And as we know, JD. Um, what we do is we have all of those icons, all of those athletes, all of those pop culture creators woven into our campaigns, having windows, having Piccadilly lights, having all of that kind of communication. So to really validate and deliver an authentic message, it made so much sense for us to support this. Um, and of course, prime location where we can maximize reach, impact, awareness, Piccadilly lights is an iconic spot and it made just so much sense for us to use that as the sort of uh, springboard for the campaign and for the communication so for us there were lots of reasons why but mainly because it's authentic and true um, and we really really are supportive of what Mark is trying to achieve with the foundation so it just was a very very natural fit and it just made so much sense um, and we have the platform and this is exactly the kind of stuff when we talk about JD being part of youth culture um, and trying to support and elevate youth, this is a great way for us to demonstrate that we can really do that and deliver positive impact to people. That's why we got involved. That's really great to hear. And, and Katie, I'd love to bring you in here because so much of the positive impact of this campaign is down to coming over like multiple production challenges. I mean, the scope and ambition of, of what you guys have achieved as a sort of collective is, is so um, interesting. I mean, how did you turn the idea into reality? I mean, we asked everyone we knew if they would get on board uh, is, is, you know, really the first thing to, to address. Um, having spent uh, all of our careers working with really really excellent people uh, when we realized how big this um, ask was it was a case of just asking everyone we knew if they wanted to be involved how they could be involved what they could contribute um, the production challenges we faced many um, first thing that we had no 
money and no funding, no resource, um, mostly our, us, our own resource, our own time. Um, we had to make sure that every single penny that we earned went to the foundation. That was always, that was one of the first things that we addressed. Um, when we were looking at this, we were like, right, well, if we can't pay someone like Brainstore, for example, to create a Kyan, because that would then defeat the point of us doing this. Like we need to make sure that we're raising money for the foundation. Um, so that was obviously a big challenge, trying to get uh, partners uh, on board. COVID was a, a huge, <laughs> a huge problem. Uh, as Carl said earlier on, usually with a, um, a player, for example, you would, you know, scan them. We, we could have potentially done that with Mark and, um, and Kai and siblings, but obviously we couldn't do that during COVID because this has all had to be done remotely. Um, we had the resources that we had in terms of um, the images of, of Kai and when he was um, alive were, uh, 15 years ago so really nowhere near the quality uh, of images that you would need at this point to do what we I mean Chris Scaff did an, an amazing an amazing amazing job um the unknown it's never been done before so trying to convince EA um <laughs> to give us access to you know their crown jewels um was a, a you know a huge ask um and then to you know continue to push and push and push them to see how far in game we could get into you know what settings we could get into how much exposure we could get and how much messaging we could get into the game to try and benefit um the foundation and and I think overall uh, the biggest production challenge we had was like the scale of responsibility that we had on our hands um you know the team uh, engine and um, me and Rich and Dave are all parents mm -hmm. so when we first started speaking about um this concept it was I mean the scale was almost too much to be honest at the beginning because I was like I don't know if, I don't know if I would be able to do this and then I met Mark and I was I mean he's just the most incredibly inspiring charismatic brilliant human I think I've ever met and and I was I, I need to do this we need to do this we need to make this happen and we need to pull in favors from everywhere and we need to get them as much money and as much exposure as we possibly can because this message is so important so yeah, I would say that that was that was probably our biggest our biggest challenge. That's really really interesting to hear. And 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 Mark, the strength of your your message and your approach really centres um, everything together. And and you've said that you want your son to be remembered not for the tragedy of his death, but the triumph of his achievements. And that cam the campaign really delivers on on that. But can you tell us how that message? is landing with young people and the people that your foundation is connecting with because you know Ken, Katie mentioned the pandemic it's a it's a it's a uniquely challenging period of, of time um, particularly that young people are facing at the moment so I'd really love to get your view on that how it's landing with young people okay so we've we've got two real main goals currently um, to tour London schools. We want to reach 100,000 young people. We uh, want to get into about 150 schools. And we also want to create a centre where young people know there's a hub that they can come to us and get the support, help opportunities, mentoring, life coaching that's needed. So the impact that I think it's had, how it's landed with young people, is when we go out there to them now, even though I had all my background of uh, being a, a number one uh, contender in the world as a professional boxer, I had this really powerful story. It added so much value to me walking out into a crowd of hundreds of young people to speak to them. And the value it added was that when I said who played FIFA and the number of hands that went up, you knew straight away that once I began to mention Kyan Prince and the story and Queen's Park Rangers, bang, their eyes popped out of their head like, this is the guy, you know, um, we're gonna really hear the story now. And then it's broken down about Kyan's character, not just his potential at where he was going. Then my message really gets to sink in totally, even though it always has, it's on another level because they play FIFA and they look at FIFA like, wait a minute, FIFA's going to get involved in an issue that affects us. 
you know, JD Sports is getting involved in an issue that affects us. Like these big brands are, are actually uh, connecting themselves to a, a, a ground, you know, front, you know, front row individuals that are trying to support and help us. And these big brands, because I don't think young people see brands in that way, that they care about them and will connect themselves to, 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 you know, to, to, to ground um, community uh, organizations that are out there supporting them. So I think it showed them maybe on more than one level that not only do, does uh, the Kind Prince Foundation have done something groundbreaking and, and they're able to see KPF on another level, but also they're seeing these brands in a different light and that they would connect themselves so with a young boy just like them who's trying to achieve and create a better life and use his gifts and his passion. And they're interested in that young man's story, even though he's not alive, even though he's not here. And they they, they feel that, they connect with that. So I, I, I think there's, um, from what I've seen from the young people and the feedback and what I'm getting from them is that the, the whole stories impacted them, especially how we've been able to get onto FIFA. And um, I think it's just really powerful. It's just a different feel when I go about doing my work now, being able to use this campaign as leverage to really get to get into the to the young people's hearts and make an impact. Because young people like they get gassed about all of this stuff, brands, you know, these things excite them. So, you know, just to know that, you know, it's 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 like if you've got a blue tick, young people get what well, you got a blue tick, they get excited about that. So mm -hmm. You know, how much more are they going to be excited to know that, you know, a big brand that they love and that they look up to and everybody wants to get a FIFA game and be involved in that has been linked to an issue that really troubles them on a daily basis. And it, trust me, it really does trouble these young people. Yeah, I think that's that you've made so many interesting points there um, in terms of the opportunity for brands to really engage with communities and, and and reflect and respond to the the issues that are really challenging them that they really care about and and Richard I'd love to bring you in here because this is such a different narrative for this type of this type of campaign and this type of work what what was the the thinking behind that you know I mean partly some of uh, what Mark said right there touches on it like kids do look at, at brands, not all brands, but certain brands, you know, brands which mean something to them. Uh, you know, for want of a better word, have a bit of glamour maybe, like Nike, Adidas, JD, EA, you know, they're, they're, they're just attractive in themselves. I think what's different about this campaign is that we may, we, we wanted the brands to be part of the narrative of the campaign, not just kind of like traditional sponsorship partners, but to actually be part of the story that we're telling. And there was a sort of a couple of different reasons for that. One, you know, I mentioned earlier how the idea kind of got off the ground and that was, that was through EA, which was kind of like a long, inevitably a bit of a long process to get it all through and, you know, in, uh, built for the game and all of that. But what that did is it kind of opened up this opportunity of time where we, again, we were sort of thinking like, yeah, so we know what, this is great, you know, we've, we've got Framestore on board now because we we're we going to recreate kind as he is and we, we want that to be totally authentic and, you know, we're totally confident Framestore are going to do that and deliver us this amazing kind. And then, wow, you know, what an what sounds bad way of putting it, but what a great asset, a, a brilliant thing to have for, for the foundation. Like, how, how can we leverage that more? And it goes back to that thing about, working on its peak all the things he would have he would have had which was sort of taken away the, the football contract being in FIFA then there's more than that there's yeah he would have been sponsored by brands you know he would have been he would have been on billboards um a, a poignant one that was part of the campaign was a, a match attacks card like as kids in the playground swapping those cards that's part of the dream of being a footballer and that would that that then became the thing it's like if we can get a big brand, you know, to put them on the billboards that kids that make, that resonate with kids in this way. If we can get them match attacks, wow, you know, we'd have something really special then. And um, EA were, were on board with that, and then we we started 
we started reaching out. Um, couldn't have had a better response from Match Attacks or JD. You know, they, you, part of the worries you think, oh God, how are you going to manage these, these huge brands? Are going to be any egos, that sort of thing? But there was never any question of that. There was just sort of real uncomplicated support, which was exactly the only way this thing was ever, ever going to come together. And um, yeah, I think that, that was sort of, that was what was, was different about it really, was um, yeah, the brands, we, the brands were just so interwoven into the, into the campaign. It's really interesting to hear. And I'd, I'd love to bring Nadia in here because I loved how clear you were when we began, when we first talked to you about your role in the partnership. It was just like, absolutely, obviously, of course we would do this which is not always the case um, in, in the market. More broadly, sometimes you feel like you're managing risk rather than taking real um, opportunities to, to do something good. And I'm sure a lot of the marketers watching this will want to learn from your experience as a brand, um, partnering on such an impactful and powerful campaign. So what is your advice for brands watching this, wanting to use the platform that they have to support the foundation? I think the most important thing uh, is to really be true and authentic to who you are as a brand in the first place. Um, that's the most important thing. JV is fundamentally a brand interwoven with youth culture and therefore the welfare of young people is important to us. Um, and that means that when we decided to support this project, um, and the Kind Things Foundation, it made complete sense because it's connected to who we are. Um, and I think all brands need to just really have a clear vision and purpose of what they represent and who they are trying to support, um, who they are trying to connect with. And then I think it's very much about doing things that feel true and authentic and genuine. Um, we wanted to do this project because we believe in what the foundation is doing and we know that the foundation is connecting with people that are, you know, interwoven in our audience and our mission and our cities and our presence and impact. And I think, you know, as a big brand and as a brand that has that scale and impact, we can really partner with people that are, you know, doing the work that matters where it matters. So for us, uh, my advice certainly would be, you know, do things that feel true, that are authentic, and that, you know, when people scratch below the surface, it really stands up to who you are as a brand in the first place. That's such good advice. And 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 there's clearly such a huge amount of collaboration um, as part of this campaign. Um, you, you all talk um, so clearly and with, with such a sort of cleared, clear sense of, shared values, shared purpose, um, in terms of what you're tr trying to achieve. And, and Katie, with that in mind, I'd love to get some advice from you. I mean, how do you, I mean, you pulled on everything to, to pull this together. Um, what would be the key learnings on bringing such a sort of collaborative campaign to market? Well, we were incredibly fortunate because everyone that we approached could see the value um, of what we were trying to do and they could see the power um, in Kyan's story and the importance of Mark's work so that made our lives a little bit easier um, and I think to be honest as I said earlier you know partnerships and relationships are absolutely key to succeeding in any project um, we've all become incredibly close which is why we talk so passionately about it because absolutely we share um, the same values um, and the you know the purpose um, of this campaign was to to elevate Mark and, and that message and I think that you know we've achieved that which has been great I mean as Rich said earlier you know having iconic brands that sit alongside one another and work well together could have been an absolute nightmare there, but there was no egos there was no jostling there was no, none of that so um, in terms of learnings of collaborative working I think they're a little bit um, limited because you know EA were happy to do whatever it took to make the campaign successful and um, brands trusted us to get on with it um, and yeah I think we were really really fortunate to have the um, the right people in the right places that were willing to get on board and give all of their time and all of their resources um, and um, to for free and also that really really cared 
uh, I think everyone that works on this project, like you said earlier, you know, shares the same values, which has been really important throughout. That's that's really good to hear. And, and and Mark, I'd love to bring you in here because I'm sure lots of our viewers will want to get involved and support the Cayenne Prince Foundation. So could you just share with us what are your focus is right now and how can the creative industries and the marketing industry support? Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, I think it's a wonderful opportunity and the right time as well, because I think now people are understanding that our leaders haven't stepped up and haven't put things in place and aren't putting the young people who are the leaders of tomorrow first. So it's a great opportunity for brands, corporates to just to be able to seize upon this, this chance and say, well, you know, we're gonna take up this opportunity we care, we're gonna connect ourselves, we're gonna do what we can. So we know that many of them have corporate responsibilities and, and, and I'm sure that there's organizations like myself that are just waiting to just connect themselves and work with these brands and organizations to be able to do the work that um, some of our government leaders haven't been able to do and make a change in the impact with knife crime. And uh, many other people are out there and they're, they're getting funding and money, but we're not seeing any difference in any outcomes. And um, that concerns me. So I think that KPF in particular would like to be able to stand up against any other big organization. I've been to charity dues where I've seen people raising a million in a night and more. And I think to myself, look at us trying to raise, you know, a few thousand pounds. Like, really, what impact could we make? Because we're, we're not about trying to accumulate wealth to drive around in big cars and show off. We're about changing young people's lives. We're about income. You know, I have to go to visit, go to see my son at the cemetery. So my feet's always on the ground. I always, I have to deal with reality at its hardest level. So, you know, for me, before I go and before I pass on this planet, I want to be able to impact as many lives as I can and, and set up a structure where long before, after I'm gone, lives are continued to, to be impacted. The narratives changed. You know, we've connected corporates with, with ground level organizations that are all working together. And regardless of who doesn't want to be a part of the solution, you know, we're not going to focus on that. We're going to focus on not the problem. We're going to focus on who wants to be a part of the solution. So I think any brands, any organizations know how the business structure goes, know how to build solid infrastructures. I think that we could improve on ours. I think that we could um, have uh, more trained professionals in every area, in every department of what a charity needs um, to be able to deliver on both sides, you know, the boardroom, um, how, how things are run and on the level of, of volunteers and, and people going out there to, um, to impact the youths. So for me, I wouldn't even say anything specific. I would say every area of business, whether it's marketing, you know, whether it's promotion, what, whatever area that we're dealing with, sales, we need that. We need that help. Project management, we need that help. We need that support. Finance, you know, we need that help. We need that support, which is very important because we know nothing can be done without resources and finance. And this has been a huge issue with the foundation because we know that we can impact a lot more young people if we have the resource and if we have the finance. So apart from, from all of that, it's staff and it's, it's, it's finance and resources that would really catapult KPF and allow us to leave a legacy that will go on long after I'm gone. Um, so yeah, so this is the, the support and help that we're looking for, for corporates and anybody looking to that that really loves this cause and cares about young people's future that's 
really um, great call to action. I think the amplification um, element and, and the, the range of skills across um, the creative industries is, is incredibly diverse. So that that's a, a really um, good to hear. Um, and hopefully um, something that this legacy of this campaign will continue to build on because the awareness that you've that you've um, you've created is 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 phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and we are um, running out of time now, and it's been so great to hear about this campaign. This campaign is breathtaking. It's something that everyone is still talking about, is still sharing, and is 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 such a powerful piece of work. So I guess I would love to ask um, everyone on the panel if you could just leave the audience with one piece of, of, of advice, one, one takeaway, one learning from this work um, that you've all put a lot into, um, what would that be? And, and Carl, I'm gonna put you on the spot and, and ask you first if that's okay. okay. Sure, of course. I mean, like I said, we, we, you know, we've been talking about this project for two years and ordinarily, if somebody came to us and said, we want to create a photorealistic digi-double, we want to put him in the world's biggest football game, we want to put him on the, the, the world-famous, you know, Piccadilly lights and a match attacks card and a film and all of these things, and we've got no production budget, you'd say no. You'd just say it's not possible. But, you know, what this project has, has taught me and a part of this was, was down to, you know, you've all heard Mark, Mark speak is there were pure intentions to do this project. And actually the removal of financial constraints meant nobody looked at that, that, that as being a blocker. So, you know, everything was done for the right reasons. So I guess my, my piece of advice would be, as we've proven, there's always a way to do something, even if you're told you can't. So even if, you know, tech, you can't shoot because of COVID, there aren't enough reference material because it was, you know, you know, photos of kind were 15 years old. There's always a solution. So, you know, don't, don't give up the find a way. And it was easy for us to find a way because, you know, there were, you know, pure, and as uh, Nadia said, authentic intentions with this project and that made it easy. That's a, a great takeaway. Thank you. And, and Richard, could I ask you the same question? Oh, sorry, you're, you're on mute. I told you some, one of us would be on mute at some point, didn't I? <laughs> of course, it's me. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I just want to sort of cheekily add something to Mark's last thing as well about ways to help um, the foundation. You can still, really simple, and you can, you can still donate at the kpf.com whether that's as a brand or as an individual that, you know, donations are always, always welcome. In terms of, yeah, sort of my advice or, yeah, sort of learning from this thing, this one's going to set Carl's uh, teeth gnashing, I'm sure, but don't ask, don't get. Like, uh, and the friends are a very good example of how far that philosophy will get you. Like, they, the, the way they bent over to accommodate us as, as our list of demands steadily grew was, was phenomenal. But I mean, the serious point there is we were, again, incredibly lucky because we had, you know, we were telling the story of Kaya, who's an incredible individual, and that's through Mark, who's an equally amazing guy. And, um, you know, soon, when you have that on your side, then people will, will engage. So we were, we were incredibly lucky. But yeah, just, it's amazing what you can get if people are engaged and, and you ask and you keep asking. Thank you. And, and Nadia, could I get your takeaway as well, please? Sure. I mean, I definitely echo what's just been said. Um, I think from my perspective as well, the importance of those shared values and shared goals, uh, the importance and the significance of checking ego, as we've said, you know, with lots of brands who all want to normally jostle for position. Uh, this was not about that. This was for a much greater uh, good um, and I think that becomes really really important and then I think um, again just echoing what's been said but really striving to make the impossible possible when you know that the impact is going to be incredibly positive on so many lives. That's such a lovely takeaway I love that striving to make the impossible possible I think that's particularly powerful in the in the in this um, campaign 
And, and Katie, I know um, that this campaign has been a real passion point for you and something that you've, been, you've got so much out of. Um, what would you share in the audience as, as to what you've learned from the experience? I have learned that if you throw everything you have at something, as Carl said, you will always find a way. So, you know, there, there were many times where we, we didn't have the resource, we didn't have the time, we didn't have the contact, we didn't have the partnership people, we didn't have, we were, I was, you know, ground zero at every point, making every phone call, sending out every email. Um, if you, you really care about it and it really matters, then you will always find a way. And after meeting Mark and hearing about the foundation and all the incredible work that they do and how incredibly important that is to us as a society, um, I, I couldn't not get on board. So yeah, absolutely. You just, you know, if you wanna, if you wanna find a way, then, then you will. And, and Mark, last but by no means least, because you're clearly the glue and the rock and the vision and, and that pure purpose um, behind this work. Um, looking looking back on this, I mean, what would be your advice um, to, to other people seeking to get this kind of work into the world and, and to really create change when it comes to the lives and experiences of young people? Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, I think one of the most powerful questions anyone could ask herself when they have a vision to get something completed is, are you willing to pay the price? There's a cost for everything. Um, you know, JD Sports, Adidas, Match Attacks, there's a price tag that they put. So if you want what they've got, you go in and you pay for it. I had a vision to impact the world. I used the word, I was specific. To use the world, to, to impact the world, change generations of young people's mindset, concerning how they saw themselves and the impact that they could personally have on the world and that they have purpose in this world. And I've been willing to pay whatever price I have to pay. And the price is quite high because I get emotionally exhausted. I'd, you know, a lot of the things that people don't know, what Katie and everybody else who was with the campaign with me knows, is the amount of pressure I was under to deliver interview after interview after emotionally draining interview after interview, going one place, the other, the other, this room, that room. And um, that was probably one of my biggest prices that I paid was leading up, doing all the press, bringing things up. Now, I've got to continue this. I've got to reach hundred thousand young people. I'm continually paying the price through emotional pain, mental. You can't put a price on that. I have to pay that price for the vision that I want. And we have to ask ourselves, are we willing to pay the price? Because we give up too easily when doors shut, when walls get put up, and we're willing to make excuses and throw in the towel. So uh, the question I learned from this and what I want to ask everybody is about the price. Are they willing to pay what they have to, to, to realize their dreams, to realize their vision that they have for life? And lastly, I want to thank every single individual that saw the vision, that had the understanding to see deep into it, that, that, that they were involved in a great legacy which has just begun. This campaign has just started something, you know, working with these awesome brands like JD, Adidas, Match Attacks, you know, Queens Park Rangers. This is only the beginning. They're, they're setting the pathway for what everybody else should be looking into and looking for their organizations to be doing, attaching their self to grassroots organizations that are impacting everyday people's lives because those are the people being employed in your place those are the people that are buying your products thank you so much and and for giving us such a, a candid insight there to the emotional investment that you are making 
for for the long term to create really really meaningful change and this campaign has had such an impact on everyone who's worked on it and everyone who's seen it um, and we're so grateful to everyone for tuning in today um, to Bite Live to hear about it and um, you heard it here this is just the beginning um, you've been given lots of ways to get involved with this campaign lots and lots of reasons to say yes um, and obviously as well you can donate directly to the foundation and there's a link just below this video so all that remains to be said is a huge huge thank you to our incredible panel for joining us today and thank you everyone for tuning in Thank <laughs> you.